Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. My name is Olakunle Kasumo and it's great to be back on the show again. Somebody sent me this fascinating novel titled Five Brown Envelopes. When I first got the novel, I put it on my table for, for a long time. Until recently when I picked it up and I just could not drop it. I'm not kidding you. It's an exciting, fascinating thriller novel with a central character called Unduka Kabiri, a.k.a. Kaka. Kaka is a guy who has a company and is bidding for a multi-billion contract. And because he's bidding for a multi-billion con contract, his competitors, who are also bidding for the same contract, became desperate. And you know when there's a lot of money, you see human nature big time. So in this book, his competitors were out to get him. It's a story of intrigues, thriller, suspense, mystery, action, romance, and all that. It is 13 plus, by the way, not for little kids, <laughs> if you get what I, what I mean. But I thoroughly enjoyed reading this novel, and we've brought the, the author of this book to the studio today. Let's get to meet with him, and then enjoy the conversation in which we explored his novel, Five Brown Envelopes. Lawrence Ameshi is a creative writer with particular interest in the thriller genre. He has written several short stories and is the author of the much acclaimed Sweet Crude Odyssey, a captivating crime fiction story with intrigues set within the oil and gas industry. Lawrence is a supply chain manager with the National Petroleum Investments Management Services, NAPIMS, and has worked in various aspects of Nigeria's oil and gas industry for over 30 years. Lawrence has a first degree from the University of Nigeria in Suka, an MBA from the River State University of Science and Technology, and is an alumnus of Stanford University Creative Writing Program. His latest novel is titled Five Brown Envelopes, a thriller that explores loyalty passion, betrayal, big business, and the complexities of human nature. Lawrence, nice to have you on Channels Book Club. Thank you so much. Great to have you here. Thank you. I thoroughly enjoyed your book, Five Brown Envelopes. You know I'm a <laughs> fan of thriller, and this is classic thriller. Uh, classic thriller. Uh, but it's not just, I mean, Thriller oftentimes has drama and action and suspense um, and romance, mm -hmm. you know. So it's it's a good mix of of all those genres. Well done, nice nice job. Thank you. So it much. has the right. I mean, it has emotions. It has suspense. It has uh, and then it it. I said to myself while reading this that the author has a deep understanding of human nature. Did you study that specially? <laughs> <laughs> um, in so many ways, yes. Life teaches us about people, and I, I, I'm interested in human beings. I like to observe them, I like to study them, I like to listen to people, I like to understand why they do what they do. So I guess all that came in. Yeah, def definitely came in into here, because when I look at your characters, your characters, you know, they depict what you see in life, generally. For example, your protagonist, Kaka. <laughs> uh, Kaka, he's just a, as, as, he's, as, he's, as, as he was known. Um, um, Kaka depicts that, that part. It defines the human nature in the sense that there is good and bad in everybody. Nobody's entirely good. And nobody's entirely bad. Is that, is that correct? That's very true. Uh, I very mean, true. Uh, from, from the worst of people, you see some good happen once in a while. And from the best of people, you see the worst of human nature once in a while. Exactly so. Uh, exactly so. That sums him up, right? Yeah. He's a normal human being who fell into so many situations and reacted like he would react. Okay, for, for so people out there who are watching, um, let, let's... What's the story of five brown envelopes? I'm coming back to talk to you. I'm keen <laughs> on knowing you more as a writer. But let's talk about this novel first, and then we'll rewind. Yeah? 
what's in this book, Five Brown Envelopes? I'm going to talk about it without giving away the plot. Because yeah, you know, it's a thriller. Yeah, yeah, let the people go and yeah. get it. That, yeah. I would say generically it's about a guy who found himself in a situation he could not understand. It was a deviation from his normal um, life trajectory. And he tried to respond and to get himself out of it. And in the process of that, so many things started happening in his family, in the business inherited from his father, and his life got very complicated. And at some point, even his, the exist, his existence was threatened. So uh, that's, that's, that's some of the story. And these five brown envelopes interject the story. They come in at certain intervals to up the ante. So each one came with a different package that twisted the story in a different dimension, all in his life. His life um, you don't want to say a lot of things. <laughs> I don't want to say a lot. <laughs> but this is a story of betrayal. It's a story of love, passion. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and we've, got to, we've got to say a little bit about this story. This guy, Kaka, yeah. has a good wife. Oh, well, uh, again, we'll leave the readers to decide. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So. You know, but I mean, like what you just tried to, not to say so much about now, he really got into trouble. Really? Serious, yeah. deep trouble. He got into the kind of corner that nobody wants to get into. Exactly. But at times we find ourselves in such corners at one level or another. But his own was serious, like we'll say on, on the streets of Lagos, serious wahala. <laughs> serious, I mean, big time trouble. Yeah. That lands him in jail, I mean, lands him in a cell and all that and all. So now, what inspired this story? Because, I mean, you took us into the criminal world. You took us into the world of finance, the world of business. I think you took us, took us into the courtroom. Uh, the intricacies of um, court cases, um, judges, lawyers, and all that. What, what, what's the story behind this book? Hmm, that's, that's interesting. The story was put together by so many impulses. But first of all, I built this char these characters. And I started with my plots. But along the line, because of the character, the nature of the characters, the story starts to tell itself. So oftentimes, I started writing, and I found out that because of the character, it took a different turn from where I was going. And at times, I was even surprised myself, because I found out that when you build your characters to be real, they have the attributes you and I have. I practically can see Kaka. I can see Uri. I can see Chief Trevor White. I can see them, because I, I live through them. And they respond to the plot based on who they are. Mm -hmm. So that was the direction that made the story evolve. At the last jot of my pen, I was shocked because I never set out to tell this, this kind of story. You didn't plan the no, ending? No, no, no. I didn't plan it that way. <laughs> it just happened based on the characters. If I tell, tell, if I tell people the ending, you will never forgive me. No, no. Because the ending, <laughs> the ending is so much, there's so much suspense. When, it, when I read the last line, I just dropped the book. You know, like, you're speaking, you just drop the mic after you have delivered. <laughs> you just drop the mic. I said, oh, my goodness. I like that. I you know, like that. This is one of the best Nigerian novels I've read. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm humble. I, I really compliment you. It's a, it's a really nice read. And it's, it's um, when you start, you don't want to drop it. Thank you. If you drop it, you want to get back to it. Thank you. Because the story <laughs> unfolds. There's a lot of mystery there. And I, I like that about... Uh, but you've not really told me, as much as I like your answer now, but you've not really told me what inspired it. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you said a combination of, uh, is, I mean, did you, were you in a dark place uh, yeah, when, when yeah, you wrote yeah. this book? When I started, I wasn't in a dark place, but this book took about five years. And within that period, so many things happened, especially in 2018 and 2019 and 2020. I lost my dad in 2018. I was quite um, a profound experience for me. And one or two other things happened within my career which pushed me off track. So I had to dig deep and think. And I was running with this plot. So those emotions came out and made the plot take it. So my inspiration was I wanted to tell the story of a man who went through a crisis 
that almost took his life. And maybe in some way, I put my emotions into Kaka. I'm not Kaka, definitely. They are two different. We are very different. But my interpretation of his role and the role of other people in the book must have come out of what I was going through. And then you know what happened in 2020 with the COVID and all that? Mm. I, I, got, um, I got it pretty early in 2020, and it was um, a touch and go experience. So it, it's, it made me see life from a different perspective. So all those things put in a normal story will definitely make you change your perspective and go deeper. So I think that's what came out in this book. And that's why I'm very, very happy that I was able to bring this book. Lawrence, out. I wish people will read your book. I wish you will win some awards. I wish, <laughs> you know, because, I mean, this is good writing. Um, now, apart from the plot itself, the story itself, the writing is good. Thank you. You know, it's very skillful writing. Thank you. Um, you know, I just wonder, when I was reading this book, I just said to myself, Kule, do you really understand human beings? Because the, the heart of man is very deep, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 tried, you tried your best in this writing to portray that. Yeah. That man's heart is deep. Yeah. And you never know what to really expect from people. Exactly. Even people you trust and people you love and people you are close to, you really exactly. never yeah. can tell, right? Yeah. Is that part of what you are trying correct. to do? Yeah, You've read a lot of books, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you there. You've seen a lot of human beings also. You've been on this for a while. And you actually, you've actually gleaned the essence of what I was trying to communicate. You can't predict what will happen to a human being when he's put in any situation, no matter how you know him. Mm. The human mind is a collection of different things, different impulses running through. And at any point in time, the person can deviate yeah. or decide to take on a path you never, decide, you never knew he could take. So you're very correct. I set out to tell the story of a human being put in a crucible of life mm -hmm. where the circumstances that brought him up could not hold him together and he had to navigate it his own way. And he met different people who had the same issues in their own lives. And they came upon him in different ways and brought out this story. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, it, it, it was a reflection of the society and the human beings which we all are. Lawrence, your everyday work is very different. Oh, very different, very different, <laughs> very different. How, how, do, how, how do you combine that with writing? This is your second novel. Yeah, my second novel. How, how do you do that? T tell me a bit about your everyday work and, and how you combine that with writing. Mm, there, are, there are two different streams. I work in the oil industry. I've worked there for over 30 years, precisely NMPC. And um, it's a career which I really cherish and I appreciate my career because it has brought me to where I am today. It has exposed me to so much. But the writing impulse, I was born to write. For me, it's like being in a room and I have to open the windows to ventilate. Writing helps me to, to ventilate my thoughts. So much goes on between my two ears. At times when I sit down in meetings, I'm looking at people. A person talks, another one talks, and the story is just floating. You're plotting. Me. Yes, it's <laughs> and bang. I say, that guy is talking like chief. <laughs> or somebody walks into my office and he says something. I say, ah, that's what this guy is. Benali. Yeah, exactly. That's what or, Benali said. Or Ure. <laughs> or, or, or Sama, Samaye. What's the name of that devious woman? Samaye, is it? Samaye. Samaye. That is my favorite character in that book. That's your favorite character. Devious, <laughs> very devious, nasty woman. Well, I will, uh, well, that's a POV point of view, but uh, she had her own issues. She had her own good side. So, so you see that meetings and then you're looking at all these people and you're yeah. seeing all the characters. Or maybe I go to eat, I sit down, I'm watching people and, and something strikes me. Or well, I'm taking a walk under the sun, which I do often. And something comes to me, you know? So it's... Writing is part of my DNA. I can't, I can't stop. But this is not just, this is not, a, this is not a one time walk. A lot of people have played a part in my progress to this point. My publisher, my friends, my family, and my editors. No story comes out good if you read it alone. It goes through a process, a brutal process, if you want it to make sense, where you are critiqued and, and uh, put on the right track. This, Incidentally, 
was part of my project when I did a virtual program in Stanford. So this was open, this story was open to my classmates, about 45 of us around the world, and they gave their own opinions. And then I had my local editors and all that who uh, um, helped me to brush up the plot. So it's not entirely, I won't say ah, I did it alone, that would be a big lie. Mm -hmm. so Even you, you these comments yeah. you're making are feedback for me for the next one. So it's, but basically- So a novel is a story of many people. It's a story of many people. So, Lawrence, I've got to ask you about uh, um, the, the cover of your book. I keep trying, I've been trying to understand it. I haven't read your book, the story, the plot, and everything. I'm trying to, I've been trying to understand. I look at your cover, and I'm trying to understand why did you come up with this cover? What's the story? Well, in all fairness, it's my publisher's interpretation of my story. He suggested this cover and it's, it's, it resonated with me. It, you can see there are a pair of hands wrapped around a guy. Another pair within the... It just shows that um, there's a lot, of, a lot of action there with the woman. And then the, these things on the side are the envelopes. If you can count them, there are the five envelopes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, those are the envelopes. Yeah. So there were, there were quite there were like three or four options to choose from. And he said this would do it. Okay, looking at it very closely now, yeah. I can see that it's actually a guy. Yes. The hands are on a guy. I yes. can see the beard on top. Yeah. Um, and then there are two, two colors. I mean, there's a black side, mm -hmm. and then there's a brown side, mm -hmm. and two different women. Exactly. And there were two primary women in this story. Exactly. Um, Kaka's wife and Kaka's... Whatever. <laughs> the, the other one. And, the other woman. You know, you know, I can't help but talking to you about life because um, I think that's a standout thing for me in your book. Um, human character, human nature, you know, life generally and all that. So I'm going to ask you, not from the perspective of your book now, as, as an individual, as an author, because the life of the author reflects a lot in the story stories he writes, the stories he tells, you know, um, I've seen that over and over. I get, I have the privilege of talking to a lot of writers and yeah, authors, yeah. and I notice that a lot. Uh, uh, um, so, is, I want to get you to talk. You <laughs> got to talk to me, Lawrence, about... I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> What's it about you, you know, that reflects so much in this book? Nice question. Kunle, first of all, I am not... So that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> I get asked that question after a book. After my first book, Sweet Quill Odyssey, people ask me, are you Bruce? I'm not Bruce. Am I Kaka? I'm not Kaka. You are not Kaka. I'm just a man who has a lot going on between his two ears <laughs> in my way of thoughts, fictive thoughts. <laughs> Well, to some extent, a part of my experiences, not me per se, my experiences come into these writings. Yeah, it's only, you can't write about what you don't know. But this is not me. This can never be me. But this creation is somebody who fits into the story that was told. So if you are trying to understand me from the book, I guess you are making a mistake. If you read the previous <laughs> one, <laughs> and you read this. Uh, it's, not, it's not my life story. No, 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 no. It's a, a story I made up about this guy. But first of all, I had to create him. Okay. I had to create the person. I had to create these people. Define them. Give them a plot. Put them in a crucible. What you call a crucible in writing. Yeah. Where it starts burning. And also, I enter into that crucible to give them life. And this comes out of it. So some of my perceptions and opinions might be split in the different characters. Mm. Like you mentioned Ure, you mentioned some other lady, there's some other gentlemen there. So parts of you might come out in different characters okay. at different times. Where are you taking your writing? Oh. Where are you taking your writing? I don't know, it's a journey, a sweet journey. A sweet journey, I, I don't know, it's, it's, um, for me it's just like a, a V, open, just keeps expanding. I keep getting these impulses to continue writing. My next book will be, the protagonist would be a woman. 
So I just keep getting these impulses. I've done one or two short stories which are not published, but there's no end in it for me. It's something I intend to do all my life. Are you disappointed by the way books are patronized in Nigeria? Um, do you feel that if you were in a different environment, um, things would be better for you as a writer? No, um, so my colleague, I wouldn't say that. I would just like to take you back. When I was younger, in the 70s, singing Nigerian songs was not the fad. We used to listen to foreign songs, Michael Jackson and all that. But today... Cool and the Gang. Yeah, Cool and the Gang, Earth, Wind and Fire. Diana Ross. Diana Ross. Michael Jackson. We even listened to reggae. We didn't understand the difference between Nigeria and Jamaica. Mali. We thought Jamaica was... <laughs> but now, within the internet, we've seen and oh, Nigeria... So, over time, it changed. Now, Nigerian artists... Same thing with the movie industry. It started from the very rudiments of using the phone and all that. But now it's gone to the big screen. And for those of us like you, I have a lot of respect for you because of what you're doing. Thank you. I, I don't in any way, de I don't demean what we're doing. This is the way, this is the future. This is the content that must come out on the big screen eventually. And what you and I know, the world out there needs to know. So we have to keep pushing. Does it give you the money you require? Well, I don't do it for money. I thank God that I have a career. I thank God that um, I don't really feed from it presently. I do it because it's my passion, and I will keep doing it. Incidentally, I was brought up by, my late dad was a professor of library studies, so he grew up in his room. He had books stacked all over, and he used to treasure those books like human beings. I ran foul with him so many times, stealing his books. So I read all those African writers. But for them, it was just put the book on the shelf. But I think we have the responsibility to take this higher. Nigerians don't like reading. Nigerians seem to have a short attention deficit. They like the skits. They like the comedy. But we can't stop the literature. We can't stop what we are doing. And someday, even if you have to migrate these stories to the screen, this content will network the world. This is our own story, told in our own language. I use pigeon in my books. Mm -hmm. It's told in our own language, in our own emotions, our own thoughts. It's real. It's not contrived. It's not trying to be like an American or British. I am a Nigerian. I'm proud of it, and I will market this all over the world if I can do that. So I'm telling the story of people like you and me who are in this place, who have a right to tell their own story too. Mm. So that's where I see it. Mm. That's where I see it. Wow, incredible. Your passion oozes <laughs> out, Lawrence. <laughs> Your passion oozes out. Thank so uh, um, on, a, on, a final, on a final note, there is somebody out there who has been thinking, I want to write my own novel. I will write my own novel one day. Uh, can you offer your top three tips for any budding writer who wants to do a first novel? This is your second, and you're already writing your third, third novel by now. I want to start writing mine. What, what are the I'm three sure you have. <laughs> what are the <laughs> three tips? <laughs> writing is a lonely... It's a lonely place. You need to sit down and write. That's tip number one. Yes. You need to be patient with your writing. It might seem like rubbish initially, but just keep writing. After the writing, you edit it. Mm. And you cut the story into bits and bring it together. Number one. Number two, you need to expose yourself to the advantages of today. You have the internet. You have all the information at your fingertips. You have access to the biggest and best writers who have ever lived on the internet. You can read about their life stories. You can read about, you can read the works they did. So take advantage of it, the science of these times. And thirdly, never be discouraged. You have to be stubborn. You have to keep on keeping on until you get what you want. Mm. People will tell you all sorts of things. Publishers will reject you. Some people will think you are being stupid. This doesn't make sense. But you alone hear the voice of that drum that you're listening to. Don't stop. And someday, you are going to break through. These are three things I will say. Wow. Thank you so <laughs> Lawrence, much. thank you very much. Thank Fan you so fantastic much. tips. And well done on um, five brown envelopes. envelopes. And the book is Colored Brown.
<laughs> and we are brown. <laughs> and we are brown. Not black. No, we are not black. Brown. <laughs> Our hair is black, but we are some shade of brown. <laughs> and you are wearing brown. And I'm wearing brown. That's why. <laughs> Goodness me. It's, all, it's brown, all brown right now. Not, we're not wearing envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us Thank on Thank you so much, Club. Mr. Gunla, nice, nice to have you here. Thank you. This is where we have to draw curtains on today's program. As always, we're delighted to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Ola Kunle Kasumu. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.